And we are back with Mr. Greg Domi. And I was like I said before the break, we were going to talk about him being an author. But before that, uh, you've been in quite a few magazines. You're on the cover of a lot of magazines. Talk about that. Late 80s, early 90s, right? Yeah, I was very fortunate, uh, especially with Sin City Cycles. Outlaw Biker and Iron Horse. I mean, they really, really liked what we were doing. Because we do a lot of benefits. We do a lot of things for homeless vets, for homeless people, uh, breast cancer, Christmas for kids. So we were an interesting character to follow. So they would do a lot of features on us in them magazines. Then later on, as time went on, I did a lot of magazines uh, like in Europe. I did them in England. I did them in J Japan. I did them in Austria, books, magazines. They're all mentioned in myself and my store, so on and so forth. So they're all fun plugs and they're really cool stuff they're doing. Again, it's part of your, your repertoire, you know, and I was very fortunate to be in a position where people had some interest in me and they wanted to come up and interview me and do my shop. I mean, they came all the way over from Japan just to do an interview that lasted about four hours. They came down and took all the shots, but I mean, they had a whole crew come with them. Really? A camera crew, they had audio, they, you know, the, they had the big mic there with the fur with the on big it furry thing on that. <laughs> So, I mean, it, it's been pretty cool. And uh, I've been mentioned in a diff bunch of different mo books in Austria, mob books, stuff like that. So, I don't know how good that is, but it's just interesting. Books that you, a book, bro. Yeah. You know, and no press is bad press in my eyes. Uh, well, you know, that's true because when, Sorry. when Sin City Cycles first opened in Boston, there's a magazine. I like, use New York, for example. New York Post is a rag, and the Times is the, is the real newspaper. Well, back in Boston, they got the Herald. And the Boston Globe is the newspaper. Well, when I opened up Sin City Cycles, the Boston Globe trashed me. Uh -huh. And there could have been more better press in my life because the people they were trashing me to weren't coming to my store anyway. Right. So the people, the other people that read it really rushed to my store. Sure. You know, and then my stores, my shirts, you know, my shirts, my clothing, the sales of my motorcycles. And in Boston, there really isn't any repair shops for the down home bike shop. You know what I mean? You'd have to go to Boston Harley Davidson. So it really enhanced my repair shop, my clothing store, my pot sales, and my events. Because our events we do, uh, they have quite a few kids. Like we do about 450 kids at Christmas. We do breast cancer events. I don't donate to any foundations. I'll tell you a story. Years ago, Sin City Cycle did one called a Friendship Ride. It was probably 35 years ago. We raised $18,000. Back then, that was a lot of money. Sure was. Well, this lady that came up representing uh, the Jerry Lewis Marathon. Uh, muscular dystrophy. Muscular dystrophy. Yeah. They, they actually had us on there and stuff. But she had this accent from down south. She's like, how y'all doing? I'm like, where are you from? She says, Texas. I says, oh, it was really nice of you to come here. Did they send you up here? Oh, yeah, they paid my way. And she was staying at a top-end hotel. So between her, and she was making 50000 a year, 30 years ago. And they say that that foundation doesn't take any money. But obviously, for me to sit there and hear all the money she just spent to get there, so on and so forth, I said, you know, for now on, we'll give them money straight to the people. Right. You know what I mean? So the breast cancer, what we do is we'll adopt girls, bartenders that have it, and we help them with their phone bill, light bill, oil bill, sometimes the rent, depending on how much money we make at that benefit. And the Christmas for kids, we'll have the mother of the children come and say you and your wife want to adopt two kids. You'll sit there and wrap presents with that lady all night long. And if she can't bring them home, you bring them to her house Christmas Eve. Wow. Like Santa Claus, you know? So, uh, you know, Sin City Cycles has done a lot of good things, but magazines has represent, has, have recognized it, as well as the local newspapers and stuff. But that was just a little, I just, I know I might have digressed a little bit, but when you said any press is good press, I'll never forget what the Boston Globe did to us. It was one of the biggest shots in the eye we got for a new business. <laughs> I, I believe me, I know this firsthand. Um, any of the magazines, did, were you into bike building? Did you build some of the bikes? And, and uh, we, not from scratch. Uh -huh. You know, it's just too long of a process. We would build you a bike, but we didn't build bikes to stock. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? If you, you wanted, we'd, we'd pick out a Paco frame for you. Whatever you wanted, we'd buy an s, &S motor training, uh -huh. and we'd assemble a bike for you. But we didn't build bikes for our showroom. Right. You know, we mainly did all the repairs in town because... Lynn, Massachusetts, Lynn, Lynn, the city of Sin, had the most registered motorcycles in Massachusetts, and we were the only bike shop. So really? there was more money in fixing bikes than there was building bikes. You know, there's a, there's a saying in the business, there's an ask for every seat. But when you're tying up 20, 30 grand and two or three mechanics for two or three weeks or, or longer, when you could just be 
getting the same hundred, sure. same hundred dollars an hour all day sure. long. We just found it made more sense to just service. Well, them because later. we grew up here in um, in Northern California, and I grew up with you know Arlen S. and 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 Ron Sims and Billy Buds, and they had there was a whole bunch of different custom motorcycle builders. So it seems like there was a a big um, um, there was a, a, a place for that here, and yeah. I didn't know if that was um, 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 relevant in other places of the United States. Well, like, again, that's a certain genre. You know what I mean? Those are guys that really have extra money. If you can afford a Ron Sims bike or an Alan Ness right. bike, you got fifty grand. I deal with the average guy that's got a six, seven thousand dollar bike who needs a top end. You know what I mean? It's just, and I still to this day I use bikes are generally under seven thousand dollars. I try to go back east to get the bikes. They get the lowest mileage, obviously. But we didn't get into that. I mean, there was, a, there was a couple of big bike builders back there. But like I said, they were in a league of their own. You know what I mean? So you never personally were into, like, customizing the no, bike? No, we didn't do any painting. And you didn't do any painting? You know, we, you had somebody for everything. You know, you have your welder. You have your painter. So when we're assembling, so on and so forth. But our shop was basically a grunt shop. It was a working shop, uh -huh. you know what I mean? So actual motor, grease yeah. monkey. And trim. again, you get your bike detailed, you come down, you pick it up on Friday, Friday night, it's all shiny, clean, you got your new top end on it, whatever you wanted. But we had a paint exchange. I used to get paint jobs done and hang them on my wall. And if you liked it, we'd do the paint exchange and you give us some money. We had a chrome exchange. Oh, really? So we did a lot of bolt-on stuff. Oh, I see. So, you know, you want to come in, you want to buy a carburetor, you want to put a set of RevTech pipes on, put a new paint job on your bike. You can come back and get almost a new bike Friday. Right. And you just pay us the extra whatever it is. But there were times guys would come in with brand new bikes, brand new paint jobs, and they'd want a flame paint job off the wall. And I just didn't want to wreck that paint job. I just put that paint job up on the wall. Right. Because of a brand new paint right. job. You know? Right, yeah. But we had the colleges out there, too, you know. You got, you got Harvard and you got, you know, all the big colleges. So a lot of the kids, they would come over and they would shop, and they would just almost have too much money. You know, they'd buy a new front end, and they'd ask you, can you get rid of this for me? I'm oh, like, wow. <laughs> yeah, I think we can handle that. <laughs> yeah, no problem. No so problem. So we, we, we had some fun with our shop, you know. But that was... Uh, you know, so a couple of you read the magazines from the Iron Horse and stuff, you'll see some of the bikes we assembled, you know what I mean? They're badass, flames from the front to uh -huh. the back, hard tails, stuff sure. like that, open primaries, foot right. clutch, stiff shift, right. you know, just a little teeny mirrors on it, sure. little bullet tail lights, yeah. you know what I mean? Yep. I know, I know, my dad's a pan head, no front brake, right. you know, pull right. shift here, right. On, on right there, rigid frame, which I used to ride with him. Hey, let's go for a ride, Stephen. After an hour, I'm like, can you feel your ass, Dad? Because mine is completely <laughs> numb. And it was this little postage yeah. stamp on the back. Pinion, I went all the way to the fucking Redwood Run in 78. In the, I think I was 14. He asked me to go on the back of that pan. I had five wow. hours all the way up there and back. I was 14, but uh, and it was my first like real motorcycle run because I and it was yeah, yeah that's I mean I'm, I'm again I'm, I grew up in a house Something you that, never forget right yeah. let's talk about you being an author because I know you wrote a book and that's going to come out later this year well we hope to have it ready for Christmas and this is a bike I, a book I wrote in prison and I was in the process of writing it for so this is fiction not it's not it's it's a fiction book it's not it's fiction correct it's fiction right but it's uh kind of a historical fiction like anything that's talked about times and dates, it will start off like Henry Kissinger talking about the Vietnam War. It's playing on the radio. Everything he says is all factual. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? It's a really good book. And it represents, a, it resembles in a small way like the Sons of Anarchy went on the biker part. But you have to understand, this book was in play before the Sons of Anarchy was. And the Sons of Anarchy, some of that stuff, only small parts of it were even realistic. As far as that show goes, I, I never even watched an episode. I have not watched yeah. it either. Yeah, I just been, and not to knock anybody's I don't either. piece I don't of either. work, but it's just I, I sometimes grew, I felt it made us look bad, like fools. You know what I mean? Well, I grew up around it, like you know I've yeah. said, and I know what it's really like. And I watched. I think it was something that happened, and I'm not going to go into what it, in the third episode of it. And I'm like. They would have never done this. Right. I'm sorry. I grew up in the house of it. I, I didn't, wasn't fully exposed, but I heard my dad tie in the garage. I knew what was up. That wouldn't happen, and I never watched it again. Right. So the book, it's based back in, like, the Lynn, Massachusetts area. And a lot of it is, some of it are different things that happened in my lifetime. Some of it just little excerpts people have said during your life. But it talks a little bit about the biker culture. 
how the police go after the biker culture, the Italian culture, because it's all kind of intertwined in certain ways where people are related to each other. And in this book, there's an Irish, an Irish, uh, an Italian girl marries an Irish guy and her twin sister marries an Italian guy. He's in a mob and she's in a bike club. So that kind of intertwines a little bit during the book, you know what I mean? So it's a very interesting... I see a movie. <laughs> yeah. Bobby, you watching, Bob? <laughs> I see a movie. Well, you know, I've, I have given a copy to a friend down in L.A. who's writing a screenplay. And we'll see where it goes. You know, I don't want to reveal the name or anything right, like obviously. that at this point. But I hope to have it out by late October. And I'll be advertising it on, my, on all my sites. Now, do you have a publisher that's handling the book? Well, at, f at first I'm going to uh, self-publish. Uh -huh. And one of the reasons you self-publish is where I do have a good following on my... On my uh, Greg Domi Sr. Instagram, I got about 17,000 people on there. If you can sell, say, X amount of books, say 6,000 books, then you go to a publisher. Right. You take it a little bit more serious because somebody probably writes a book every three minutes of the day. Sure. And they don't have time to read everybody's book. They don't, you know, they have readers, but, you know, so it's one of those things in that when you self-publish, you have a chance to go around a little bit more with your book signings, get to see your people, get to meet your people. There's a little bigger financial end of it for you because when you give it to a publisher, they end up publishing, handling the whole thing and giving you about 20%. But their idea is they're gonna publish so many of them right. that the money's are supposed the to equal. The, 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 you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah, the volume will definitely overstep right. that, sure. And I hope that that's what happens. So maybe in another segment, I can come back here and do it again when the book's out. That's what we're going to do. We'll definitely and we, do that. And we can talk about that, and we, we can definitely. maybe even read a little bit out of it. You know? We can. We can We can definitely do that. Let's take one more break with Greg Domi. We're going to come back, and we are going to talk all about Sin City Cycles, where you can get his stuff, where you can go online, where you can, if you're in Massachusetts, if you're somewhere else in the United States or wherever, you can get that stuff. And again, if you want to come in and say hello, we're going to get all of that stuff when we return. And you're looking for motorcycle apparel? Of course, there's only one place to go. Sin City Cycles in Antioch, California, and Sin City Cycles in Lynn, Massachusetts. And I'm fortunate enough to be sitting here with the owner, proprietor of Sin City Cycles, Mr. Greg Domi. And uh, I mean, I've come in the shop, you, knives, pins, vests, hoodies, girlies, um, my girlfriend loves her yoga shorts and her, and, oh, she bought the whole line. She's got the, uh, the, she the, certainly the, did. the workout pants. I mean, Greg does everything. It's very, very, very quality stuff. I mean, you, again, you wash it, seams aren't coming apart. The prints are never twisted sideways. It doesn't shrink. They don't crack. I mean, all quality stuff inside your shop. Helmets, like I said, vests, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we do, we do our best to give a good product. I mean, I wouldn't, people will say to me sometimes, will this shrink? I almost take that personal because I'm not going to sell you an item that's going to shrink or you're going to be disappointed with. And all I sell is Sin City Cycle clothing, no other gear. And I wouldn't have been able to do this for 35 years without your respect and your help. We appreciate you. Our business is actually a family-owned business and the money goes to my family to help my family. And uh, we appreciate each and every person. Our slogan is, come in as a customer and leave as a friend. You know, uh, we do have all the things Steve mentioned and more. You know, we'll sell you a motorcycle for you or we'll sell you a motorcycle. If you want to get parts, we mainly use drag specialties. You order the part over the phone, and you get it in 24 to 48 hours. Also, our gift certificate can be bought over the phone and I'll mail it to somebody else. If you want to send somebody a gift, say, uh, I wanted to send Steve a gift. I'd call the store, give him Steve's address and Steve's name, the amount, my credit card. He's going to open the mail one day and say, wow, check it out. How cool. <laughs> I don't have to die. I go straight to the yeah. shop. <laughs> but go down and see him. He's on um, the address. 814 A Street, a Street Antioch, Antioch, California. California. But sometimes you do travel to Lynn Mass because I've seen your Instagram post. I'm a whoop. He's in the bees back east right now. Quite often. We're in uh, Saugus, Massachusetts at 352 Central Street. And we originated back east, as you know, uh, 34 years ago. This October will be 35 years. And our loyal customers have kept us alive with us just selling a Sin City Cycle product and all the apparel that goes with it. Helmets, glasses, gloves, 
Uh, every all style of the motorcycle yeah. accessories. Yeah, all the style of clothes you like. If you want yoga pants, you want leggings, you want booty shorts, you want a hoodie, you want a ball cap, you want a beanie, you want pimp shades, you want a buck knife, you want a pin for your jacket with brass knuckles or a hammer. You know, we, we try to cater to everybody. It's from $6 to $6,000. So if you come in, you just got a few bucks on, you want to say hello, grab a pin, come on down, man. We really welcome you. Sin City Cycles, go see Greg Domi. Well, my friend, I must say, it's really great having you in. Um, let's talk about Sin City Cycles. Let's talk about, because you do so much mail order and stuff. And I'm going to have Tim, our producer, put all of this stuff up on graphics um, and, and get it going. Um, I want people to come, you know, into your shop and obviously say hello right. and meet you. So um, go ahead and tell us um, um, the address of both shops in, 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 in Lynn, Massachusetts and, and Antioch, California. And then we will, we will get these guys to, you know... Put it up on the internet, come in and say hello. And um, I mean, this is quality stuff. It, the lettering's all raised. It doesn't shrink when you put it in the, in, the, in the dryer or the washer. It keeps its color. I've had this for probably almost two years now. I wash it and wear it all the time. It never gets any smaller. It's just the logo never cracks, right. never fades. It's just quality stuff and it supports. Uh, uh, and actually, like I said, an ambassador well, and, into you. the motorcycle community and, and the respect that we have. You know, I mean, I see the respect that so many people show you, Greg, and well-deserved. Your, your story is very fascinating to me, all of it, every, every bit of it. Um, I guess we go through this life that we do. And, and when you're ready to check out, because believe me, I'm not ready to check out by any means. I have a lot of music left in me to produce. Um, you look at yourself and go, what mark did I make? Right. Uh, what, what did I do that really made a difference in my life, let alone other people's lives? Did I fulfill what I was meant to fulfill here on this earth. And I wake up every morning and feel very, very confident that I have. You know, people love my music all over the world. And I've told, been told many times from a lot of you fans that it got you through a time when it was tough in your life. And, and that's great. And um, for a guy like yourself that I, you know, going through your story and all the things you've done, I mean, man, at the end, he, you've lived a life that a lot of people have not, couldn't even fathom or been fortunate enough to live and that and, and that's an homage to you sir oh, and, thank you. and and again um you and your family and all and all that kind of stuff and i and i mean um, well, I, well i would say that is it is kind of part of my legacy because this october will be 35 years for sin city cycles and like i said we really do believe come in as a customer leave as a friend but it's been around so long and it means so much to the people that from lynn lynn city people city guys are really more down with where they come from because they lived hard lives. And I cannot tell you how many people get buried wearing Sin City Cycle gear. Wow. You know, they come down and they say, we all want the same shirts where Paul bears. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you that know, kind of stuff. And then, yeah, uh, right. they, you know, my brother's getting buried in the Sin City Cycle shirt. Uh, last year, I'm in my store and a guy comes in. He's with another man about his size and a little boy. And he says, do you remember my son? I can't think of his name, but he's a big scrapping dude, right? I said, geez, I really can't say again. He was probably because when I brought him in, he was his son's age. He says he's here to get his son his first hoodie because when he was his age, that's when he got his first hoodie. Wow. And the three of them wore these blue and white fade shirts out the door. I have to say, when they were walking out of the street, I had a lump in my throat. Wow. You know what I mean? Because it meant that much. It's been generation after generation. I had a guy come in my store, had a tweed sweater on, this big ass Mercedes out front, and he says, Can I ask you something? I said, You try. He says, is this some kind of cult or something? I said, I don't understand your question. He goes, I could buy my grandchildren anything they want, cars, anything. All they want is Sin City Cycle hoodies. <laughs> wow. I said, well, let me, let me pick some out for you. But like I said, it's a It's not a cult. Yeah, and like I said, it's a family business. And I'll tell you another story. These four kids come in, they're buying Sin City Cycle hoodies. Three of them buy hoodies. So I teased the last kid. I said, what are you, too cheap? He says, no, sir, I don't have any money. I said, well, then take one. He says, seriously? I said, of course. Your friends ain't going to have one. I'll have one. You don't have one. And it meant so much to him. About two weeks later, he was back with his mother, his wife, 
and I don't know who the other person was, but they all bought Cincinnati Tiger hoodies because he felt part of the family now. Right. You know right. what I mean? So we do an online business, and it's SinCityCycle.com. But my online site is really outdated because I'm not a computer guy. So I'm working on that. We're going to get that done. But if you go on SinCityCycles.com, you get the gist of it. But if you go on uh, Instagram, Sin City Cycles California, I do constant commercials on whatever products we you have. You do. You do. And they're really <clears throat> good. And we welcome the phone calls. You don't have to worry about going online. Just call. Give us your credit card number. We ship the next day. Everything we have, we ship the next day. So you can call, shoot the shit, order a couple of shirts, go online, see what we got. That's only going to get better. And I have to somewhat apologize for how outdated it is. But I'm not a computer guy. You I'm know. not either. That's why those guys are here, right, right there, and they know that. Right. And then that's why I can do the show and do all that. Right. And I have to have my girlfriend. Vicky has to do. I'm terrible at it. Right. I'm like, and you know what, Greg? I can't sit down for two seconds to sit in front of a computer. You got to have a certain patience for that. I'm moving right. around, so I just can't sit. I have no desire to do that. Right. I never have. Again, so if you go to Sin City Cycles California on Instagram. We'll also tell you about our rides, the ones that you come on with us. Right. So anybody's welcome to join us on our rides. That store is in Antioch, California at 814 A Street. We'll be putting the graphics yeah. all right yeah, here. Yeah, you can't miss it. It's an orange and black building. And the, the Lynn store is actually located in Saugus, Saugus, Massachusetts. How close is that to Lynn? This side to side. So it's Lynn, like Oakland, Lynn, Emeryville, yeah. kind of like you Lynn even used know. to be Saugus oh, I see. about 100 years ago. And uh, that's at 352 Central Street. It's a smaller location, but if you are looking for a bike and you want to let us know what you're looking for, or you're looking to sell your bike, you want to put it on uh, our site, we'll help you sell it. And like I said, we locate bikes. Right now in, in California, we're just going to be like changing tires, oil, and batteries. That's about it. We're not going to get into the mechanical work. I don't have the facility for it. Right. You know, and finding the right mechanic that can represent you on uh, the standard you want isn't always, you know... Plaus people have plausible. other people have other other yeah right. i know how they are exactly so yeah we'd, lo we'd love to meet you all you know come by again our antioch locations 814 a street Antioch. yeah we're going to be running that graphic boom it's just just tim have that thing just keep running it by yeah. and the, and the lynn one as well because it's it's um again the rides are great and and you don't have to have a harley davidson to go on these rides they're for everybody yeah. motor we i'll say this it is usually 100% Harleys, but there was a couple of rides oh, yeah. where there was a couple of BMWs on it, and one guy even had a, um, like a Yamaha or a Suzuki sure. or something, and he came on the ride. And you know what? Nobody treated him any different. He didn't ride. He uh, rode in the pack all with us, We have a couple, great. Of, couple of handicapped people come on trikes, yep. and it's also all races are welcome. Yeah. All races, no matter who you are, you're welcome. It's the motorcycle community. Yes. You know what I mean? And we put out the drinks. Everything's free. If you want to make a donation, I don't take that money. I send it to the guys in prison to make sure they have commissary. I buy the stuff every week at the expense of my store. If you want to throw in a dollar for a water, fine. And if you don't and you don't have the dollar, don't be embarrassed. You're our guest. Right. Have yourself so a you're drink. You're not obligated. Yeah. Have, have yourself a drink and a cookie, right? Yeah. Right? And a cookie. <laughs> and a cookie. But I bring them to you first so that you uh, you get to rape them for your coffee the next morning first. But, uh, and I do. Uh, you know, and this is the thing. It's like my, my parents always taught me that, you know, when you go to something, somebody invites you to something, show your appreciation by bringing something to them. Like, I agree. You know, I go to your shop a lot of times. I, I give Greg, I, I, I'm a candy maker. Lately, because I've lost weight, I'm not a candy eater. So he eats my candy. I bring fudge and stuff, and and, and I'm. And it's a pleasure to do that for, and that's just kind of how I was brought Man, that's up. It's good. It was awesome. Well, sir, it was great having you in right, today. Well, thank you. It's so much. Remember to go to his web. Well, go to Instagram at Sin City Cycles. You can find him, but you can get him at SinCity.com. Um, go pick up some of the swag, or you know, even better yet. Go into Antioch on A Street. Say hello. He's just hanging out there. And, and he, awesome conversation. There's a lot of cool pictures of him and Christopher Walken. And, and, and uh, I think you're with uh, Penny Marshall in one of them, Penny too, Penny right? Marshall, John Lovitz. John Lovitz. A whole bunch of great. It's just uh, a Robert Tenero, 
Danny Trejo. We're going to start throwing some. And in fact, I'm going to have Tim through these episodes that we're doing with Greg. I'm going to have him throw up while we're talking, throw up some of those great pictures and stuff. But it's a really good conversation every time I come in. The, I do I do rides where I call my friends and what are you doing? I'm, we're going to see Greggy at Sin City Cycles. What are you doing? We're just taking a ride over to Sin City Cycles to see what's up. I got to go pick up a knife or a hoodie or a patch or something. I just got to come by. It's something to do. So... Again, sir, thank you so much for doing your show. Thank you. When we have, when we have the, um, when the book comes out, and we're not giving you the title, I don't even know the title. (laughs) We will definitely bring Greg back in here. Thank you. And we will definitely uh, do a whole episode on just the book. How's that sound? Well, of course, we'll always bring up the Sin City Cycles and stuff, but we will do that just for the for the book. What do you say? I appreciate you, and I appreciate your production, and people. Got to love you because you're just a likable guy, man. Well, I'm glad you said that. I, these guys know that I really don't have any uh, twisted, fucked up ego. I'm friendly to even all my fans. They say it everywhere they go. I've been, you know, always right, friendly with right. everybody. And I think that, you know, you catch more bees with honey that way. And it's sure. better to be, to be, you know, life's too hard as it is, Greg. And you know that. Might as well make it easy for everybody. So, you know, that's why I look at it. You guys know what to do. If you've met Greg before, or if you've been to Sin City Cycles, leave me a comment. If you haven't, go and check it out. And obviously, I need you to subscribe to my channel. It's free. The more subscribers, it tells YouTube that we have a strong thing that we're doing here, and they really like it. But uh, for myself and Mr. Greg Domi, we'll see you guys in Zetro's Toxic Vault very soon.